I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me. George W. Bush is stupid. Girl, you just don't realize what you do to me. When you hold me in your arms so tight, you let me know everything's all right. In the year 2000, America was held witness to the closest federal election ever held in their history. The two candidates fought long and hard to try and claim their seat in the presidential position. But through convenient loopholes and an ultimate Supreme Court decision, George Walker Bush emerged victorious. Now, due to the split margin by which he had barely won, many people suspected that his presidential term would see very little action. However, George W. Bush's time as president would prove to be one of the most eventful and damaging periods in all of American history to date. It's a budget with a lot of line items. It's, there's a lot of pages. There's a lot of numbers. One of the aspects which Bush was identified with most by Americans and non-Americans alike was his constant ability to make himself look unintelligent. He would always make himself seem uninformed and unfiltered during public speeches, causing many people to question his qualifications as a world leader. While this may seem like a quirk which has no relevance to his impact on America, this ignorant image was what was being projected for the whole world to see. The stereotype of Americans being naive people who are only concerned with their own affairs was amplified immensely. Examples of Bush making himself seem foolish can be found all too easily. If you're a single mother with two children, which is the toughest job in America as far as I'm concerned, and you're working hard to put food on your family. It was not always a given that the United States and America would have a close relationship. These are big achievements for this country, and the people of Bulgaria ought to be proud of of the achievements that they have achieved. The Prime Minister of India? Uh, the new Prime Minister of India is, uh, uh, no. I know the human being and fish can coexist peacefully. There's rumors on the uh, internets. And one of the things that I've used on the Google is uh, to pull up maps. I have filters on internets. There's an old saying in Tennessee, I know it's in Texas, probably in Tennessee, that says, fool me once. Shame on, shame on you. It fooled me, we can't get fooled again. Unfortunately, George W. Bush's feats of ignorance are not only demonstrated through his words. His actions display an additionally severe lack of tact. Such as the situation on May 1st, 2003, when Bush announced the end of major combat operations in Iraq. The banner that hung behind him preemptively declared, Mission accomplished. This bold claim would prove to be an error, as the Iraqi war would go on to last another seven years and cost thousands of additional American lives. Another example of Bush's insensitivity can be identified during the 2005 disaster of Hurricane Katrina. Bush decided it would be a good idea to have a photo taken of him flying over the wreckage of Katrina on his way back home from a vacation. This resulted in an immense amount of public backlash, with even some iconic American celebrities portraying their disapproval. The spirit of the people of southern Louisiana and Mississippi may end up being the most tragic loss of all. George Bush doesn't care about black people. The culmination of all of Bush's foolish blunders made millions of people all across the world adopt negative opinions of Americans, thus further proving him to be an insufficient leader of the free world. Oh, 
On September 11th, 2001, the World Trade Center was hit by two Al-Qaeda hijacked planes, completely destroying the Twin Towers and many people's sense of safety. While this was one of the worst acts of terror to ever take place in America, it benefited the Bush administration greatly. The evenly split election between Al Gore and George W. Bush suddenly became irrelevant, and the majority of Americans seemed to make an immediate stance in support of Bush's plans for retaliation. With the overwhelming support of the public, Bush launched a campaign to rid Afghanistan of the terrorist harboring Taliban government. Despite the active war in Afghanistan, in his 2002 State of the Union address, Bush decided to widen the scope of the war on terror by including the regimes in North Korea, Iran, and Iraq. He also made a bold claim, saying that... The British government has learned that Saddam Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. That being said, Bush resorted to the use of his new doctrine of preemption in order to launch a unilateral war with Iraq on March 20th, 2003. The war progressed quickly, and on May 1st, 2003, less than a month and a half after the war began, it was announced that major combat operations in Iraq would be ceased. The Bush administration claimed that the mission was accomplished, yet of course this proved to be incorrect. Soldiers remained stationed throughout Iraq for roughly seven more years, resulting in over 4,000 dead American troops and about 30,000 casualties. On the opposing side, it was estimated that between 100,000 and 650,000 Iraqi civilians were killed. The reason for the large margin of possible civilian deaths is primarily due to the barbaric attacks which American soldiers would initiate. Areas with high civilian concentration would be bombarded with bombs, thusly diminishing America's reputation further. In the end, Bush's costly efforts were revealed to be fruitless, as Osama bin Laden had yet to be found, and it was announced that Saddam Hussein was in no way in possession of any nuclear arms. It's brashly decisive decisions such as these that display the negative stain which George W. Bush has left upon America and the world. During the time which Bush occupied the White House, he indebted the American government to a crippling degree. Upon his inauguration, the United States federal debt was at a significantly high $5.6 trillion. And yet by the end of his presidency, the country's debt had almost doubled, leaving it at $10.05 trillion. Bush's initial intentions to lower the federal debt had seemed to be on the right track at the beginning of his presidency in 2001. However, his immediately hostile and war-craving reaction to the attacks on 9-11 led him to invest almost $3 trillion into the war on terrorism. While the mistake of this decision did not become immediately apparent, after years of battle with little to no benefits, the American public began to question the reasoning behind the unnecessary Iraqi intervention. The Iraq conflict even continued past Bush's second presidential term, meaning that he never managed to end the war he started. Costs for the Iraq and Afghanistan wars continued to plague the country, with an assumed total of $6 trillion being spent by the time of their completion. Unfortunately for Bush, the war's funding was also a contributing factor to another situation which forced the United States to take on more debt. The mortgage crisis of 2007 was unintentionally allowed to occur because of Bush's decision to begin the war on terror. When Bush was allocating funds to support his war, he relocated federal funds away from the prevention of white-collar crimes in an effort to pay for the war on terror. As a result, the criminal justice system's white-collar investigative divisions were reduced five-fold. Of the millions of criminal justice system employees, 2,300 were working on elite white-collar investigations. And keep in mind that these 2,300 people were responsible for investigating the over 1,300 industries within the United States. These significant drops in funds made it much easier for Wall Street executives to take advantage of their customers. This resulted in years of criminal activity within these companies, leading up to the eventual market crash. The market crash of 2008 required emergency government intervention, resulting in a long recession that the country is still recovering from. 
To this day, Bush continues to endure criticisms for the policies that led to the crash. And as a result, he will forever be linked to the greatest economic downturn since the Great Depression. George W. Bush, the 43rd President of the United States. During his eight years in office, he proved himself to be an inadequate leader who negatively impacted America and the world. The damaging image which he presented to the public, the unnecessary wars which he got his people involved in, and his incredible contribution to the debt of America, all culminate to display his overall ineffective presidency. His lack of intellectual curiosity and depth of reflection may have been contributing elements which caused his ignorant attitude. If one thing is for certain, George Walker Bush's unfavorable contributions to humanity will result in him being recognized as a president who is not deserving of his position. I call upon all nations to do everything they can to stop these terrorist killers. Thank, Thank you. you. Now watch this drive. <laughs>